today we're going to be doing some very exciting statistics. And to be more specific, we're going to be collecting data or information using tally charts and then making a bar graph. So firstly, you might be sitting there thinking, what is statistics again? I know my teacher has said this word, but oh, it's fallen out of my head. All right, let's go through this. Statistics is when you collect data, organize the data, understand what the data means, and then present the data. All right, maybe still a little bit confusing. Let's look at a bit of an example. You need to gather information about how many pets each person in your class has, and then you organize that information into groups, and then you make a graph out of the information. So you may have done this before. Perhaps you've counted Smarties or M&M's colors, or maybe you've looked at other cars that have driven past the school. If you're wanting another statistics video after this one, I made a statistics video in London where I stood on a bridge and counted all the different colored cars or vehicles that went past, and I turned that into a graph. So you can look at that one after this. So up on the screen, I've got some examples of what we are doing today. First of all, we've got a tally chart. You can see that it's got two birds and it's got some little lines in it that you might be wondering what they are. Well, the little lines, those are tallies and that is how we gather or collect information or data. So this tally chart here, as you can see, it's called a bird count and it's going through Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday, how many sparrows they saw on each day and how many robins they saw on each day. And with that information, they put a line for each sparrow or for each robin that they saw, and those are their tallies. So that's them gathering the data or information. And then on the other side, this is not related to birds, this is just another bar graph that I found, and it's showing different types of graphs that people like. And as you can see, it's got the names of the different graphs down the bottom. And then in the other example picture we have, it's got nothing to do with the birds, but it's just an example picture of a bar graph, or some people call it a column graph. And you can see down the bottom, it's got the names of the different groups of the different graphs that people like. And then up the side, it's got numbers, and you can see the bars or the columns go up to each number, and that shows the number of each group. Now, these are just quick examples. We're gonna be going a bit more into examples of tally charts and bar or column graphs as well. Let's move on. Let's look at a bit of an example, and you can help me do this tally chart of collecting the data or information about the colors of these vehicles. Now, look at some of them have got cute little faces. I don't think I've ever seen a car with a face, but these ones are pretty cute. So as you can see on the tally chart, we've got the different colors, yellow, blue, red, white, green, or other. Now other covers lots of different colors if it's not included in the other ones there. So rather than writing a big long list of colors, you can just pick some and then write other. So how many yellow cars can you guys see? I can see one, two. I can see two yellow vehicles. So I'm gonna put ding ding, two tally charts next to yellow. Let's move on to blue. How many blue vehicles can you guys see? I can see one, so I'm gonna put one tally next to blue. All right, looking at red vehicles, how many red vehicles can you guys see? I can see, yep, two red cars up the top, so I'm gonna put two tallies next to red. And let's see how many white cars, I can just see one. How many green cars? I can see one with a little green man driving it. And then other, we've got just one little orange car down the bottom that I didn't write orange down, so I'm gonna include that in the other group and put a tally next to other. So that was a quick tally chart example. Thanks for helping me gather that data. Now you might be wondering, what do tallies look like? Here is an example. One tally is one, two is two lines next to each other, it goes up to three lines next to each other, four lines next to each other, but here's the tricky part. If you have got five tallies in one group, you put four lines next to each other 
and then the fifth line does a cross through the middle and that groups it in five. So tallies always come in groups of five. So if you've got a line through the middle, it means move on to start your next tally group. I hope that makes sense. So you've helped me do an example tally chart. Now we're gonna step out into the real world and we're gonna be gathering real data about the colors that we can find in our gardens. Now all of our gardens are going to be looking different to each other. So that means different colors will be showing in different areas. Of course, different seasons will have different colors. I know New Zealand is coming into autumn, so there might be more orange and brown, but if you're coming into spring or summer soon, then you're gonna have brighter colors. So we're all gonna have very different colors in our gardens. That way, all of our graphs will look different. So come and help me as we walk through my garden and see what colors we can spot. Okay, thank you for helping me look for colors in my garden. And what we're gonna do with those tally charts or that data that we collected is we're going to turn it into a bar or column graph. But before we do that, I thought I would show you an example of a bar graph. Have a look at this one. This one here is not to do with the colors in my garden. This is to do with all the different classmates that I have and what animals or pets they have at home. So as you can tell down the bottom, I've got four groups. We've got cat, dog, rabbit, and hamster. And then up the side, we've got uh, the numbers that go from zero, two, four, six, and eight. So looking at the different bars or the different columns, we can tell how many people or how many classmates have cats, how many have dogs, how many have rabbits, and how many have hamsters. I mean, that's what the data is for. So that's gonna help us with that. So I'm gonna read here and go to the column that has cat, and I'm gonna go right to the top and read that the column or the bar lines up with the number four. So that tells me that four classmates in my class have a pet cat at home. Let's look at the dogs. Now we'll go to the dog column. I'm gonna go right and look at the very top, but oh, the bar doesn't reach exactly up with the line. But if I move my eyes over to the left, I can tell that the bar shows me in between the number six and eight. So that tells me that seven classmates have a pet dog at home. All right, let's look at how many people have a pet rabbit. Oh, this is a short one. Um, rabbit, go up to the top. It's in between zero and two. So how many classmates have a rabbit? Yes, just one classmate. And let's go to the last one. We have a hamster and we'll go right to the top and it's showing me that it's in between two and four, which tells me that three people or three classmates have a pet hamster at home. All right, so your graph might look like this, but of course every different class has different data, has different information, so all the different bar graphs would look differently. So this was just an example, and we're gonna use the information that we gathered about the colors in my garden to create our own bar graph. When we're making a bar graph, these are the things that we must include. Firstly, it has to have a title, and the title should be about the topic. So the topic of my bar graph that was the example before was how many pets do my classmates have? So that's my title. The next part, there needs to be the names of each group on the bottom line, which is called the X axis. So the different names of groups would be cats, dogs, rabbits, and hamsters. Then we need to have the numbers of the amounts on the vertical line. That's the line that's going up towards the sky, which is called the Y axis. Those could be 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, or it could just go up in 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It really depends on what your topic is about, whether your people's answers are going to be 
big or small. Then you need to have a different bar for each group and it makes it even better if you use different colors for each different bar. All right, so hopefully you have been able to spot all these things on my example bar graph and I'm gonna use this list to make sure I include it in my next bar graph talking about the colors in my garden. Okay, so I have turned all the data that I collected about my garden into a bar graph and I'm gonna put it up on the screen right now. All right, hopefully I've included all the things. I've got a title, I've got the groups down the bottom of the different colors, I've got numbers going up the side, and I've got different bars for each group that tell me how many in each color, and I've used a different color for each bar graph. You can pause the video here to help you when you're gonna be making your own bar graph. So yours might look similar, or it might look completely different to mine, but this will be a helpful example for you guys. Because what you're about to do for your activity time is collect your own data. Now, of course, you've seen me go out into the garden and look at all the different colors that I have, but you might not want to go out into the garden. You might want to go into the kitchen and see what different colors you can find in the kitchen, or the bathroom, or your bedroom, or the lounge. You could pick any room that you want. This is your data and your graph, so it's up to you. And remember to go back through the video if you need any helpful hints or reminders on how to do a tally chart or a bar graph. And I wish I could see them when you were finished, but hopefully when you're finished with yours, you can show it to your different family members in your house. I'm sure they would love to see it. Now remember, I've got lots of other videos that can help with your distance learning or learning from home. And remember to have a look at my other statistics video as well. The link is down below. And I will see you guys very soon.